All right, to get started with the Gen Framework, you first need to make a new Go project. You can skip this step if you already have a Go project. So in my case, I'll open up VS Code and type in Go mod in it and then the project name so just call it gen tutorial for me and then it creates that and then you want to copy and paste this command i'll leave a link to it in the description below and this will download it the gen framework and add it add it to our project and then for now you can close out our terminal window here and then you can just create your main.go and you need to set a package main and then to actually make use of the gen framework you need to import the gen framework itself and the http library all right then you can make your function main after I delete the space after, before my parentheses. So just func main parentheses braces. And then you need to create what's called a router. Routers just handle the URLs. So I'm going to call mine a router colon equals gen.default. And then you need to start your router. So just call router.run. And then that will actually get your web server up and going. But right now we don't actually have any routes that people can visit. So that's what we'll get set up next. All right. So the route I'm going to be setting up is just the example one they provide on our GitHub. So you type in router.get and then it's slash ping and then funk it has uh this crazy syntax here that i do not exactly fully understand but the most important thing right now is just the ctx and then you can just press enter while in your curly braces and then you type in c.json or ctx.json all right and then http.status okay for some reason it is not autocomplete okay there it goes and then you just type in gen.h and then you can open and close your curly braces and then you type in your json here so message and then pong and then in your line and comma and then you can open this up in your terminal and go run main.go and that will start your web server you have to allow access you have to do this every time uh and then you can go to your web browser type into it localhost colon 8080 and then to view the json you just type in slash ping and it says message is pong all right now you probably want to get some html rendering on the screen if you're going to be using this to make a website so to do that all right to get some html on the screen you first need to make your html folder so i'm just going to call this html and before you start making your html you need to set up the uh, html folder so i'm just to copy this from their documentation here it's using uh, reg regular expressions i'm just to change this templates to html this is just to be the uh, folder name that has your html on it and the star just gets all the files in here and then in your router.get slash ping you can put in here instead of ctx.json you can type in ctx.html and it's http.status okay just like json and you type in the name of your html file so in my case it will be index.html once I make the file and then gen.h uh, and this is where you would type in anything that you'd be passing to the templating language however right now we're not dealing with templating and then I can make my html file so I'll just call it index.html and then you can use the shortcut in vs code to make a new uh, html boilerplate I'm just gonna call this like long and then I'll put an h1 in here h1 hold on my thing's doing something weird okay and then I'll just say Pong, and then I can save this. Go run main.go. Okay, low access. Instead of saying message, it should return an HTML page. And now we can get some CSS set up. And this also applies for stack files as well. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, to get CSS going, you need to set up your stack file. So I'm just going to call it static. And then I'll probably also make another one in here called CSS. Now, getting uh, stack files to render in Gen is a little bit hard. Well, not exactly hard. It's just a little bit different. But all you really need to do is just copy this from their documentation. It's router static you're pretty much just defining a new uh, static folder this is the url that people would visit to get their static files so i'll just change this to static and then this is the local path so that will also be static it's recommended to keep these the same name to avoid confusion and then in the css folder i will make one called like well, css here i'll set the body and the html to have a background color of black and i'll set the h1 to have a color of white and then of course in your CSS or your html file you go link css href it needs to be slash static slash css style.css rerun your web server go run main.go allow access of course and then if we set up everything correctly our css should be rendering correctly on the screen now this static uh system will also work for anything like images so if i were to add in a image i don't actually have an image picked out yet so let me just go ahead and find an image 
image. All right, I have this image here. This is from my 5M server. If you're into 5M, you can join it. Link will be in the description below. Uh, but anyways, if we were to add in a new uh, image element, uh, SRC, and we would just type in slash static slash images and then just give our link to an image, uh, we should not have to run our web server to, for this to work. And uh, it shows up on the page. Now, if you get rid of the router.static line, which in my case is line 13, it will not render stack full. So let me just go ahead and rerun my web server go run main go uh, allow access we can see that it no longer loads the css uh for some reason it still loads the image i think that's because the way html works but yeah as you as you can see it no longer loads the css so that has been the basic rundown of the gen framework for the go programming language if you found this video informative be sure to leave a like and subscribe it helps out the channel helps good content like this recommend others that's all for me for now find uber out